I'm Maggie O'Halloran, one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living, and I'm here to talk about a plant commonly known as porterweed. Porterweed. It's in the Stachyterpheta species of the Verbenaceae family. Excuse me, Verbenaceae family. Um, this family is also the home of a blue vervain plant, um, often known as a verbena. Um, that is commonly used medicinally, but the porterweed is in a different species under that family, the Stachytarpheta species. And within the, this species, there are three different plants, possibly two, that are described in similar ways in literature. So, this plant is the genus Urticafolia. Sometimes it has a sentiment, it's considered a synonym of the Cayenensis, but sometimes they're described in a different way. But we know that this one is Urticafolia. It is not the Florida native variety, and I know that it's not the Florida native variety, which is the Jamaica census for, uh, species because of a couple of different factors. One is the leaf structure. In, the, in this variety, the leaf is a little bit more broad, and you have the very distinct leaf edge there. They both have these really gorgeous purple flowers and the leaf shape is really similar on the Florida native species variety. This one has a common name of rat tail because it grows a little bit more spindly than the Florida native variety. They both have this really beautiful purple flower that is edible and kind of tastes like a mushroom. Our local uh, plant guy, Green Dean, says that the mushroom flavor is best um, appreciated after a couple of minutes of chewing on it and letting your olfactory senses get involved with it. So another way that you can tell that this is not our Florida native variety is that it's also really tall. This variety, the urticafolia, is taller and spindly and grows more taller um, as a shrub. Our Florida native variety grows much lower to the ground, one to three feet tall max, whereas this one's about five feet tall right now. The Florida variety is lower to the ground. It still has the beautiful purple flowers and it grows more as an annual, maybe dies back and reseeds itself and comes back. Whereas this one, I have access to year round. It's beautiful, the pollinators love it. This variety is what you will often find if you were looking, if you go into your local nursery and say, hey, I'd like a porter weed. Because this variety is more commercially available and so a lot of plant nurseries use the term porterweed because it's a common name, porterweed is a common name that they share, um, to identify the plant. Whereas your Florida Native Plant Society would let you know that this variety is considered an invasive because it self-seeds so regularly, it's once you have it, your neighbors will have it. It's beautiful and the pollinators really enjoy it, but it's important for us to all know that they are two different species. And if you have the Florida native species, you're gonna be supporting the Florida native wildlife. Whereas this variety, you would have um, be introducing a species that maybe isn't either native or naturalized here. Common name, porterweed. So if you want to know a little bit more about the identification, one way to find out is go to eattheweeds.com 
Um, the Green Dean has a really nice write-up there that gives pictures and talks about the distinction between the two and the way that you can identify the difference between the urticafolia and the Jamaica census uh, Florida native plant. The Florida native plant, as Jamaican census would let you know, is originally from the Caribbean. It's been used in for medicine and apothecaries by people for a really long time. And still to this day, um, I have friends that incorporate it into their apothecary in their home for a lot of different ailments, including um, digestive upsets, irritable bowels, possibly irritable bowel syndrome, but I'm not here to diagnose or treat and neither are they um, as home herbalist. It has this long history of use for both varieties. So the species that is here it has more European origins, but it's spread all over the world and is actually considered um, invasive in many other continents, including Africa. Um, so be mindful of your purchase of this beautiful plant. It has a lot of other historical uses. And tell me if you have ever used it by commenting below or if you've seen it around, or if you're growing that beautiful Florida native variety of porterweed um, so that you can tell folks about where you got it. If you're interested, the, Nord the native plant society of Florida would be also another really good resource to find out where to get that. So it was historically used as an anthelmintic, which is a scientific name for being antiparasitic. And that's true for the Jamaica variety as well as this variety. Um, antiparasitic, if you live in Central Florida or anywhere really during the summer, it's really important to know which plants around you might be able to support you and getting parasites out of your body because they're everywhere. It also has historical uses as an abortive fascient, and I have no experience in using it that way, but abortive fascient plants, we like to be really mindful of their use for people who are either pregnant or considering becoming pregnant. It has historical use for fever, dropsy, um, which has questionable terminology there, um, ulcers, all kinds of stomach troubles, as I mentioned before. It has shown in scientific studies to have antibacterial qualities um, in these in vitro studies. It's also been found to be an antinosusceptive, which means it's a scientific way of saying that it is able to inhibit the body's sense of pain. So some pain relievers that you experience, it's because the pain or the inflammation, um, the sensory perception of the pain is gone. And this is one of those that gives that option. It has also been used in rheumatic inflammation protocols historically. And the uses have been in teas and tinctures and baths. So in this book, Earth and Spirit, it's a book uh, written by someone who went to Puerto Rico to discover um, some of the herbal traditions by people there that are using more of an oral tradition as part of a the community and the lifestyle and not really writing things down because it's a part of life using plants. In this book, it talks about the use of the Jamaican ver variety of the porter wheat in baths to bring down fever. So there are ways to incorporate plants like this beauty into your life in a way that is beyond your regular teas and tinctures and that is in incorporating them into your bath. And you can dry them and put them into jars and have them near your bath, 
or you can take them fresh and put them into muslin bags and put them into your bath. I like to incorporate herbs into my bath time routines, but if I'm putting the floating plant in the bath, it looks beautiful, but it kind of impacts my ability to really enjoy the bath because I might think about how it has to be cleaned out after. But if you put it into a cloth bag, I've heard of people even putting herbs into old socks and tying them up and throwing them in the bathtub as a way to bring the herb into the bathtub and still be able to experience it um, without the cleanup. I mostly use this plant as a pollinator plant. I love having it in my backyard because I can throughout the day see bees and butterflies just hovering around and enjoying life and eating in my backyard and I get a chance to appreciate them. But I also enjoy it in tea blends. This is not a plant I typically have alone in a tea. I often add other plants that maybe taste a little nicer like the Tulsi that's growing right next to it um, or holy basil. And to harvest the plant, I would cut just above some leaves. And then I would take just the leaves into my jar. In the literature, I've seen that people use all the aerial parts, so it would be the leaves and the stem. I've also heard of people incorporating the root bark into medicines like teas and tinctures. And the root bark would be basically the outer layer, if this were the root, the outer layer um, that is under the ground the root bark. So for my tea, I'm just getting the leaves to a place that I can shove them into the jar. Let us know if you have any questions down below. Are you using porterweed? So I could take these leaves and muddle them in my hands before I pour the water in. If you have a mortar and pestle, you can use that just to break up the outer um, cell body of that, the cells of the plant. Or I can just stick it in there. I can add other flavorful herbs and fill it with my water, cover it. and let it steep for about five to 15 minutes and then strain it, enjoy a cup of tea. In this weather, where it's 97 degrees outside right now, I would probably let it cool first. This time of year is a great time to add plants like hibiscus to your tea blends. If you're interested in growing, I'm gonna go back to the plant. Um, if you're interested in growing, make sure that you're picking up the Florida native variety and not the urticifolia, um, which could be the invasive species. You want to get the Florida variety, which grows closer to the ground, and you'll want to plant it in disturbed well-drained soil in full sun and with any plant you're putting first into the ground you make sure that it's watered until it's fully established and once it's established you'll have it around to enjoy all those beautiful butterflies Thank you for 
joining me in my garden today. I look forward to our next chance to talk about the plants. Make sure to email us or comment below with any questions or thoughts, and we'll see you next time.